All right, here is a video intended for Gearbest and ANET. This is suggestions for improving the ANET E10. Um, let's see, first things first. Um, these motors need to be rotated 90 degrees. Uh, also, my, my viewers can also take this advice for their printers. Um, these motors need to be rotated um, 90 degrees so the plugs come out the back. The problem is the tolerance between the space between this plug and these knob in the back is very tight. And so far, most of the printers have come with this H brace bent. So the, the H brace is bent downward. I guess in the factory or something, this gets pushed on enough to bend it. Um, and that causes this to collide with the plug. Rotating this 90 degrees makes that irrelevant. So I would do that. Rotate this 90 degrees. Um, advice for end users. Do not take these two screws out and simply rotate this. You need to do it right. You have to remove these. Take the two screws out all the way. Um, this will wiggle off of the end of the rod. Okay, slide the rod all the way down. Okay, the um, x-axis gantry. Um, slide this off. Use a screwdriver. Get the, the capture nuts out of here and reattach them to the screws for later installation. Okay. And then you need to undo these two grub screws here and gently twist, tug and turn and pull the um, um, Z-Rod out of the coupler and then you can take off the Z-Motor. I tried to um, undo these two screws and simply force rotate them and I, I believe I bent this Z-Rod and I bent that motor shaft on my Z-Stepper. Um, so now I have a slight wobble that produces artifacts in my print that was not there before, and that is 100% my fault and no one else's. The other thing I would do is undo these four bolts, screws here, holding the um, Y stepper in place, and turn it 90 degrees so this plug comes out the side instead of the back. This way, when you tilt the printer this way, you're not pushing on that plug. That would be a bad thing. Uh, over time, that would be a bad thing. One moment. A small suggestion. I don't know how necessary it is, but it wouldn't be a bad idea. Is a cover for this. Something that would say, um, you'd loosen these two bolts and slide a cover in here. It would be a rounded cover that would cover part of this. So that this can never catch onto that. It doesn't seem to want to. This is as far as it goes. And it appears to behave pretty well. But I could see that cord being bent in such a way that it catches on that, so that might be a good idea. Just something to keep that from happening would be a, a good suggestion. Not necessary, but a good idea. Um, let's see. Another problem is this. The Too much of the heater block is exposed, so this cooling fan actually prevents you from reaching higher temperatures. Like, I cannot easily reach 221 degrees because this is blowing on the heater block, cooling it down faster than the heater cartridge can heat it up. So I seem to be limited about 210. So I put a little bit of tape on here to block some of the air and it works a lot better. A permanent solution would be a small metal plate inside that sits right on top of the heater block that has a slot in it that's attached to this. So that when you put this on, this fan air cannot hit the heater block. So a small metal plate inside there that's angled down here like this and comes up and then goes across the top of the heater block. That would direct all the air over the cold end, the cold end, instead of over the heater block. And you could build that right into this. Um, all you would need is a metal plate that would attach to, say, the same two screw holes the fan is attached to here, or just weld it in place, bent in place, whatever you want to do. Actually, you could just put a bottom on this. Like right now, there's a bottom here. We'll have that bottom start at the bottom and go, actually, I'm draw it. hang on. So what you have right now is this. This is your cold end. This is your heat break. This is your nozzle and heat block with your cartridge in it. This is your backing plate that this all attaches to. It attaches to the rail, um, your extrusion rail. And then this is the metal shroud, this right here. Okay. On this back side here would be this cooling fan. All right. And here is the primary fan, the hot end fan. This fan is supposed to cool this, but as you can see, it's blowing air all over this. So all you would need is a metal plate that comes up like this and across like this with a slot in it so that it would fit right over top of the hot end. So from above, it would look kind of like this. 
and so this would be angled like this and this, this would be a permanent part of this so that when you slid it on this slot here would go over top of your heat break and that would prevent so your heat break would sit inside here that would prevent most of this air from touching the heat, the heat block it would all go over here to where it belongs to, over top of the cold end one other problem you have is that this contact for the limit switch touches this bolt so you actually physically cannot insert this plug it does not work what you have to do is take a, a pair of pliers grab that plug and bend it up so it's at an angle and then you can insert the plug um, I don't see an easy way of doing that without remaking this entire bracket you'd have to extend the length of this bracket so this bolt is down a little further but an easy solution would be to have the employees at the factory assembling this printer bend pre-bend that just just all they have to do is take a pair of pliers pre-bend that up at an angle so that the plug can be inserted without um, interfering with the bolt I would suggest pre-cutting the Bowden tube into two halves there is enough tube there for two Bowden tubes and the whole piece on there is way too much. Um, Bowden tube could be a little finicky to cut, so I would suggest having them pre-cut that at the factory correctly so that you simply include the two pieces in the kit instead of the one longer piece. It is a good idea to include enough for two. I do like that. Also, these spare parts kits that you send with the printer. Of course, I can't find it now. There it is. Um, I would suggest including an extra grub screw since they are easily lost, mine fell out in the print. I do love the fact that you include an extra hot end. Um, another suggestion would be to include um, these M3 by five, a couple extra of those. They're easily lost. Just toss a couple extra in the kit. Also, you, I love the fact this is a different bag, but I love the fact that you mark the bag with spare parts and you mark the <coughs> parts you'll need with what's in the bag. That is fantastic. Please keep doing that. Um, one suggestion would be to add to that label so that it actually says what printer it's for. So say spare parts ANET E10. This way I can toss these spare parts in a drawer in their stock bags and I will know, okay, that's spare parts for the ANET E10. And do the same thing with the tools. Market tools ANET E10. Um, just to, it would cost you next to nothing, but it would really increase the end user experience when dealing with the printer and storing the parts. If at all possible, include a glass plate on with the printer this is this size is difficult to find I have yet to find one and this print surface is not very durable it's good the parts stick like gangbusters but they stick too good and you end up tearing apart your print surface getting the parts off I'm gonna be switching to print and Z but um, I would think of maybe um, including something a little more durable if possible but definitely um, thicker um, one of the other upgrade you can make these screws that go through the bed to the leveling knobs they need to be a little longer because this is so thin there's a lot of um, Delta here uh, between mat, min, min and max and right now we're at the max as far as uh, looseness I've actually had this one fall off because I'm using so th few threads to level the bed that um, they, they've, they would fall off because it's not holding enough it would wiggle enough to come off um, but I would suggest um, making these screws another two or three millimeters longer. That shouldn't be that difficult to simply use a longer screw. Um, it shouldn't cost anything, it's just a part change. Uh, but that would solve that problem of um, not having enough threads to securely stay in place. The spool holder needs to be bigger. Not the nuts, but the actual shaft in the middle it's a 3d printed part make it larger you need to make it at least five ten millimeters larger i have quite a few rolls that barely fit on that spool holder and it causes drag when it goes to pull the filament so since that's a 3d printed part that would be very easy for you to update just just take that center shaft there and make it a little bit longer another thing i would suggest um this printer as far as the steppers are concerned is insanely quiet i mean Listen to how noisy the CR10 is. And that's not fan noise. That's steppers. Because I've replaced all the fans and that thing with silent fans. Um, so you're not hearing any fan noise. That's all stepper noise. This thing is virtually silent. It's not a competition for the CR10. This is competition for the Wan House. 
and the maker selects and printers like that um, but this printer could have a very big selling point of being silent except for the fact that your fans are like freaking turbines <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine it would cost more than a dollar or two to simply replace these four fans with quieter fans. Upgrade to silent fans. Um, put two 60 millimeter fans in here and use low RPM silent ones. You'll get the same airflow without the noise. Replace this with a 40 millimeter silent fan and get a better quality blower fan because that thing's like a little freaking turbine. But if you replace the fans and this with something quieter, even if it means raising the price of the printer five bucks, um, this printer would have a solid selling point as a solid silent printer. I mean, once I replace the fans in this thing with quiet fans, it'll cost me about 40 bucks. Um, actually, 30 because there's only three I can replace. I can't replace that one yet. Um, it'll cost me 30 bucks to change the fans in this thing. Um, so it'll probably cost you guys in China $5. Um, but that would be a good selling point you could have this thing in your bedroom if you replace the fans with silent fans it, it is that quiet it is, it is crazy quiet it's, it's alien like quiet <laughs> um i'll make a video later once i replace the silent fans i'll make another video showing you just how quiet this thing can be um also if you can my cost amazon prime shipped to put a mosfet in this thing is 7.99 if i can get it off amazon for 7.99 prime shipped you guys can probably get it for a buck or less. Put a MOSFET in here. It'll make a lot of people happy. It'll increase safety. And it's just just put a MOSFET in there. I don't necessarily think it's necessary. I think the bed is small enough and the power supply is good enough that I think you're probably fine without a MOSFET. But you'll make a lot of people happy. Just toss a MOSFET in there. It'll cost you a dollar. Um, and improve your soldering. You got some sketchy connections inside that box. They're not bad. I don't think they're dangerous, but they're sketchy. Um, contrary to popular belief, I like these connections. It's a good idea. You just slide the rubber boot off, put your plug on, slide the rubber boot back over. It's 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 fine. It does what it needs to do. It's just a stinking limit switch. It doesn't need to be a, a perfect crimp on connection. Um, let me think of anything else. That's it. I can't think of anything else offhand. This is truly a very, very nice printer for the price. If you guys can keep this at $300, and if you make a couple of those slight QC upgrades and changes, I think you guys will have a really solid printer here. The print quality is absolutely fantastic, especially once you turn down the jerk and acceleration. I mean, I have zero complaints whatsoever with the print quality from this thing. Um... That's it. Change that jerk and acceleration. Fix the QC problems. Rotate the three motors so that they are. These two are facing backwards and that one is facing sideways. Fix this crimp connector. Um, extend these screws a little bit. Make them a little longer. Um, if at all possible, get rid of this H brace and go with a solid piece of metal that thick or thicker. Um, like the wand house, you know, the with the slight cutouts, but it's all one piece, it's all solid. The H brace is just a bad idea because these create lever arms that are easily bent, and so far, pretty much every one of them has come bent, <laughs> um, which creates a problem with your impact. Um, but yeah, if you can, but otherwise, it's not a big deal. It is holding up pretty good. If you rotate these motors, you could probably get away with keeping the H brace. But if you can change it without increasing the cost, do it. Just make sure it's thick. Do not go thinner than this because that's how you get warped beds. That's the, the primary upgrade on the wand house to replace that H that plate here. See how thin it is? The primary upgrade is to replace that plate with a thicker one because it warps. Um, yours does not appear to have that warping issue. It's a nice thick plate. Um, all I can say is keep it up. Make a few of those upgrades. Put that MOSFET in there. Um, fix this that needs to be fixed because you cannot reach proper temperatures um, stock because the fan is cooling off your heat block um, that's it great printer I, I mean contrary to a lot of uh, people on YouTube I really like this printer and I think it has a huge potential and I think it fits in a niche in the market it is not competition for the CR10 uh, I would never buy this over the CR10 but I absolutely would buy this over a regular i3 i mean it's it's stiffer it's better it's faster um i have to do a hundred dollars in upgrades to this printer to get it to this printer's position right now it prints slightly better quality here's the nose cone off of the wanhell and here's the nose cone off of the e10 i would argue that the e10 is a slightly 
just slightly better quality print. Not by a lot, but it's just barely there. It's equal, put it that way. It's definitely absolutely equal. And then you combine that with a significantly bigger print volume. Holy crap. I can print three of these nose cones on here. But I can only do two on the wand house. So that's nice. And I can do taller. <laughs> this I can do a nose cone twice this tall on this printer while this is about the max height of the wand hell at 180 millimeters. So keep up the good work and make it better.